Hey everybody, this is Jess Birkin with another edition of Hennepin County Bar Association Tech Practice Briefs, where we are bringing you short videos about some sort of tech topic that gives you a very useful tip. Um, so this is me, I'm not appearing on camera today, but if you wanna check me out, this is where I live. Uh, Birkin Law is my website. So our topic today is how to use the developer tab in Word. So let's get started. Just going to pull up a blank document here. You can see the developer tab right there. I have added that. So let's quickly just show you um, what the developer tab is. The developer tab is part of the ribbon where you can see there are all these different functions. And it's not a default option in Word. So when you install your Microsoft Office Suite, Word out of the box does not include this developer tab. So you would just go to File, Options, then go to Customize the Ribbon. Now here we have Popular Commands, here we have Main Tabs. You can see I have the developer tab checked. So if I wanted to, for instance, add the drawing tab, I could do that. Um, if I wanted to remove the developer tab, yours might look like this in the beginning, um, or you may not have it here at all, in which case you would go to main tabs, choose the developer tab, and click add. So I'm going to actually remove that because I've added mine twice. So then once you've done that, then you just click OK and you're all set. So the developer tab allows you to do some really cool stuff like making forms. So you can use these, um, what are referred to as controls, to create fillable forms. And the reason that this is so handy is because let's say you are working with a virtual assistant or a law clerk or a paralegal and you would like to make some documents that they could just fill in um, or maybe you have clients who could use a fillable template um, I use these quite frequently with my clients I have a subscription plan where I create sort of like dummy proof downloadable forms for my nonprofit clients that they can allow their staff to fill in and they don't have to worry about changing any of the language or changing any of the legal meaning because it's just a fillable form. So um, to get started, let me show you how I would convert a standard document into a form. So here we have a letter and this letter is um, something that I have created as a template for my nonprofit clients who may have employees who want to run for office and a lot of times this happens with groups that are very you know issue oriented they do a lot of advocacy they already have somebody working in government relations or in some sort of advocate or community organizing position and go figure the people who are called to those jobs are often also the kind of people who want to run for office. So um, this issue comes up quite a bit because obviously nonprofits can't have political activity. So I needed to develop a sort of standardized letter that the HR person could give to the employee when they're going to run for office and distinguish how that's going to work at their um, with, while they're working for the nonprofit in a capacity that they need to limit that activity as it affects the nonprofit. Now, um, I've also made forms for short-term rental agreements or um, standardized letters or simple contracts. Um, you can even make purchase agreements or leases, things where anything that's fillable, you just need them to fill it in. So, okay. Let's get started. Here is something that the client is going to need to change, right? The address is going to need to be something different. I'll highlight the text that I want and then I will click on the developer tab. 
and then I am going to just click insert rich text content control. Now you see what happened here is it actually put a box around this text. And if I click on properties, I can see exactly what the content control properties are. So if I wanted to give it a title, like maybe some instructions, um, I can pre prevent this from being deleted. So it has to be a field that they use. I could even say that it's not allowed to be edited. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And that's all set. Now, what about the date? The date is gonna change and they may not want to use today's date because maybe the letter needs to be dated for tomorrow um, or in the past. So here we have a date picker content control and I'm going to click that. And now we can see it will pull up a calendar where I can go back in time, I can go forwards in time, I can pick whatever day I want. Oh, but now look at that. I don't really want the formatting on my letter to look like that. So I'm actually going to choose my formatting in the content control properties again. So here I'm gonna choose my formatting, click OK. And now no matter what date I pick, it's going to look fantastic, just the way I want it to look. Now, maybe I would like to change, have this be fillable also. That's not a problem. And maybe I want that to actually be a drop down menu. So here I would choose drop down list content control. And now it has given me this drop down list where it's gonna say, choose an item. But the problem is there's nothing to choose. So again, I'm gonna to go to properties. And now I'm going to add the options for the dropdown. So maybe my options are going to be hand delivered. And maybe I want sent by US mail, that seems like a good one. And maybe I want sent by email only. Click OK, and now the instructions are there and when I go to select, I can choose my options. And it's retained the formatting that I had in that original line. Pretty easy. Okay, so we can also make just, you know, any of these things. Maybe I just want this to be a plain text control. Um, there are some differences between the rich text control and the plain text control that have to do with the properties. So, Plain text control, if you need something to allow for multiple paragraphs, you can say allow carriage returns with this kind of control instead of the rich one doesn't necessarily have this as a feature. And then obviously we are going to want to put in their name. So now again, all I'm doing is highlighting the words and clicking the content control and it just instantly creates this field for me. So then I just go through my letter and I do that wherever I have something that they need to fill in. So now, as I run through my, my document here, I just note where the different fillable fields are. So here we've got the person's title and then maybe I, I want that to say Now, if I, if I leave this blank and I put nothing there, that's not a problem. It's just going to show this click or tap here to enter text. But I'm going to put this in as a placeholder. 
so that people know that's what they should be doing. Now, another way I could do this is to highlight the field again and go to properties and give it a title and a tag. So now it has a little instruction comment there. Just in case this gets deleted or has someone else's title in there, we've got a label that makes it very easy for the user to see what they're supposed to do. So maybe we want to add that to all of them. No big deal. You can go back into the properties at any point. And now these both have instructions when you highlight them. You can do that for all the fields that you're creating. And then when I get to the end of my document, obviously I'm going to have a name and title here. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of that and make that fillable. And then here you can see I've chosen a rich rich content, but there's no opportunity for the user to add additional lines of text. So on the off chance that somebody wanted to, to do that, maybe they are particular about their title or it needs to be signed by multiple people, maybe you have two co-presidents, um, this isn't going to work. So I am actually going to remove this one. And let's use a rich content box or a plain content box instead and allow carriage return. And carriage return is just an old way of saying hitting the enter key. Now I can make that as long as I want. All right. And then we will do the same for this one. Now here. This is where it gets a little bit confusing because it does say that you can put a plain text control in, but I can't select multiple lines and put it in. So what little pro tip here for you, I'm going to actually copy paste, then add my control, allow carriage returns, click OK, and then I can just paste in whatever I need here. That's a little pro tip for you as you're making these. Um, some of the other things that you could do, let's say I would like to give my clients an opportunity to put their uh, letterhead in here or a logo. I can insert a picture control. And now this will morph to whatever size picture they enter here. So you just click on it, choose from a file or even something from online. Um, load in your logo or your um, letterhead image and this this box will grow or shrink to the exact size of whatever image you put in there. Some of the other tools that we have here are combo box, drop down we went over, the calendar date we went over, repeating sections, and then these are all the legacy tools, which are ActiveX controls and legacy forms. And you can play with these things. We've got, you know, radio buttons and check boxes, and those can be super useful when you're doing a list. So um, sometimes the older controls work better on different types of documents or for different purposes. So those are still there. Um, let's just say that we wanted this person to, you know, make a choice. Let's have them choose between option A or option B. Maybe this person needs to make a choice on the form. I can just insert a checkbox right there. Um, and then those are just simply things you can X. Now you could also use a radio button. When you use some of these legacy forms, it opens what's called design mode. 
And so you're going to see more of the coding. And in order to not see that, you have to click design mode off. Um, so some of those things are a little antiquated and a little older. You may have reasons to use them, but most of the newer features are right here. And those are the main ones that I use. So I hope that's helpful having you be able to make forms and um, you can see there would be a lot of applications for this in some simple contracts and things like that. So if you have questions about this or didn't answer something, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can find me through my law firm website or you can connect to me on my Hack Your Practice website where this is my side project where I work with lawyers directly to help them change their life for their law practice through technology. Um, so thanks again on behalf of Hennepin County Bar Association and myself. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next brief.